forever. Dog. Look, man. Where? Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, and look over there. Wow, is that Ooh. culture? Oh, yes. My goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Las Culturistas. Ding, Ding dong, Las Culturistas Las calling. calling. You gave a little punch on that intro. Had a little bit of, as I say, verve. <laughs> A little extra verve. A little extra. Oh, Bowen. Oh, Matt. Wait, what's going on? Well, you know, we've had a 10-year relationship. Yes. It's been a decade long. Yes. Couples therapy. Couples Should therapy. Should we consider it? Uh, there are rumors of multiple podcast co-hosts. <laughs> that have who, done it. That actively do it still. Really? Yeah. I won't name names, but there are, there are like, you know, famed... You know, storied couple like uh, we know co-hosts, the, the do hoes, the do hoes that have gone through couples therapy together. Yes, I have a feeling how I know how our therapy session would play yeah, out. Go, it would be Bowen calmly expressing how oftentimes I talk over him and take up all the air in the room, and then it would be fifty to fifty-two minutes of me crying loudly about how that's not true in a forty-five minute session. In a forty-five minute session, yes, and the. The, the I almost called it a moderator. The therapist. The moderator. <laughs> the, oh. the therapist would say in that Carrie Fisher tone. The from, Martha, from, the Martha from Raddatz. Powers, um, we have to stop. <laughs> and we wouldn't be asked back. We wouldn't be asked back. I'm sorry. The Martha Raddatz. Can I apologize to you? About what? I'm annoying. No, you're not. The reviewers of this podcast say she's annoying. Um, <laughs> That review. So some, so can, can you read it aloud? I think someone they took it down. <gasps> they did not because I think someone saw your story and they flagged it. So you si- you sicked your fucking fans on this poor person here. <laughs> yeah, this poor person who said the following, and I don't know if I'll ever forget it. Go quote it. Matt Rogers is so annoying. What what else? He's a bad singer <gasps> who gives me Frankie Grande level attention seeking level. <sighs> I hate you. <laughs> Period. <laughs> but and also he dropped in <laughs> Bo and Yang and all the guests are excellent. Excellent with an A. Excellent with an A. E X C E L L A N T. So there you go. You, I mean, and if that person's listening, we don't mean to mock your spelling. <laughs> no, but because you know what, spelling is subjective. It's actually rule of culture number three. Spelling, spelling is subjective. subjective. I don't know my words, but I do know my heart, <laughs> and that's a frequent thing I say on this podcast. So yes. maybe me and this reviewer are more connected than we possibly could ever imagine. Sure. Um. I'm so sorry, Bowen. I mean, but see, now you're putting the emotional labor on me to forgive you. <laughs> I can't win in this town. And <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready. So just give me my own time. So how do we communicate? How do we go on? How do we go on? You, I think we only speak through um, HP and HPJ. No, they, I don't want to do this. There are conduits. No, I'm kidding. I want to talk to them. No, Matt and I and... Uh, HPA, so cute. He's sitting over there. Such a little cutie. Um, I think we are doing just great. We've really, you know, we've had some rocky, some rocky patches in our friendship. True. And we've, we've, we've weathered every storm. And I think we've been through our lowest moments. I would knock hope on so. wood. Let's knock hope. Wood. How would it get worse? Um, if you fucked my mom. <laughs> that's how. I don't feel that. <laughs> I don't feel that. That's the way my mom and my chemistry your your mom, my mom and my and chemistry is you you've met her once you i don't met know. her once and i feel like it, the chemistry was very positive i just it didn't feel sexual to me okay <laughs> uh don't how dare you rule that out i'm just saying i know what i like no. and i think at this point in my life i think i like boys bow okay all right I think whatever I like boys bow i think it's time you know who i do like beautiful guests are beautiful guests <laughs> this Speaking is of couples therapy i mean this is Climbing, climbing, climbing the charts, baby. Honey, forget about climbing. Perched up on top. Per- it's, it's on the perch. Honey, 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 honey. honey. Oh, it's on a redwood. It's on a redwood tree. <laughs> it's on a redwood tree. Perched. There's no branches though. Not even a one. Not not a branch. But it's famously, per- redwood trees they have no branches. Drill of culture number ninety one. Redwood, redwood trees, trees have, have no branches. branches. Go out I to think they friend. do. Check them out. I think they do. I don't know. I think we've we've uh, debunked it. We've debunked. Well, these are two fantastic, fantastic Stunning. people, stunning comedians, um, and they are hosting uh, uh, these this new fantastic podcast, Couples Therapy, mm-hmm. on How Stuff Works. Um, we just did their live show. So last fun. night, truly one of the most positive performing experiences I've had. 
And I had a really fun time with you on stage. Such a fun time. I'm not being hyperbolic. This was really so fun and just effortless. And it's 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 a credit to uh, how they build up the audience, like they how they sort of set the tone in the room for the audience, and the concept of the show, and um, just everything. Oh, it's just so well paced. It wasn't weighed down by you know hosting bits or anything like that. It was just. <laughs> No, their hosting <laughs> bit was so was so effort was so there effervescent. Were, uh, effer- <laughs> Some of these hosts, let me tell you, they weigh the show down. No, and I'm saying we sometimes we do that, and we're all sort no, of, we're we're all susceptible. Never, not once. But you know what? These two <laughs> speak for your fucking self. Are just so charming on Sorry. stage. <laughs> No, I cannot have you in this grovelly state for I'm the rest so of the I'm so sorry. You know episode. how hard this year has Stop. been for me. <laughs> I can't do this. Don't saddle the episode with this. <laughs> oh no, no, I can't wait to bring these 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 guests in because I cannot deal with this <laughs> for the rest of the episode. I've been attacked online today. Stop. How dare you do this to oh me? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, but you must check out their live show. Uh, the next one is in LA at the Virgil, Oct- uh, October Saturday, 6th. October 6th. Saturday, October 6th, a day after A Star Is Born comes out. Yes, absolutely, honey. And that is, it's Ooh. before A Star Is Born and after. Yes. The, those are the demarcations. Mm-hmm. Um, please welcome into your ears Andy Beckerman and, and Naomi, Naomi Ekparagan. Hey, hey king and queen. <laughs> guys, guys, so much. First of all, uh-huh. well, there's a lot to first say. First of all, uh, if I can. Naomi and I, we do actual couples therapy. Yes, it's really great. Yes. I would like to point out, Bowen, you walked Matt into a uh, into a trap. Uh huh. You Wait. said, "Oh my god, what? thank you." You said, "Let me just point this what out." Did you I, said, what did I say? You said, uh, "Let the man finish." What, what Matt asked, "What could you do to ruin this relationship?" Yes. You said, "Fuck my mother." Yeah. And then he said, "I would never." And then you said, "What? You don't find her attractive?" Yeah, it was crazy. What a what trap! You, did. you really what are. What a trap! You're it was servicing <laughs> an emotional bear trap in his heart. Servicing the bit. It was servicing of the course. bit. Well, and this is the thing, you know, and that can be so hard when you have this relationship, and bits are what give you life, <sighs> oh. but also what can be so unnerving, right? Yes. You want to commit to a bit, but then we're all these delicate creatures, honey. Because we're going to talk about I'm only, it. I'm only just now realizing my trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only just now realizing that I've been through something traumatic. No, I no, 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 I'm coming here on Bowen's side, but <laughs> I'm going to talk about you guys. Uh, you will get to hear Bowen and Matt's hilarious live set on our podcast, Couples Therapy. It's making the, the, the pod? Oh, you know it is, oh, girls. Guru. But I will say, I do want to call back to something. A little spoiler alert. You know, mm. Bowen and Matt, they did talk on stage about, you know, the sliding scale. Yeah. What yes. to find, what to do. And I'm telling you, yeah. Come we on. can hook you up yes. with a therapist for $50 or under. Seriously? I'm telling $50 you, $50 or under right now. Yes, yes. Honestly, was, I need that. There was a point at which I was seeing someone in New York for $15 a Shut session up. and she had a degree. And so if it's possible for me to find somebody and you know the way you feel about finding the right person, I got all sorts of triggers. You got to be white, but not too white. You got to use the right language. You can't be you can't be a black and in my mother's age group. Yes, that's going to be triggering. I'm going to need too much approval. Oh, my God. I can't be honest. You can't be a man. You know what I mean? So I get it. Like needing to find that perfect person. Yeah. But I get this because your relationship is much like our relationship. Okay, you. I'm I'm a Bowen. I'm in the Bowen. I'm in Andy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I you, you definitely guys, you guys are in a block together. <laughs> That's how you because identify look, yeah. in life. In life. Look, bits can either be the melted cheese in your grilled cheese sandwich, or, or they can be the rocks in Virginia Wolf's pockets. I thought you were oh gonna do another. Oh my god, that was another food. Poetry. I, I thought it was gonna go into like it was gonna be another th- component of grilled cheese. <laughs> exactly. <I'm> like, <laughs> or the rocks in your grilled or cheese. The, the pebbles. The in agent your of cheese. suicide. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. So how, as a couple, how did, are you a bit driven couple? Would you say? Andy's much more into bits. Mm. And really? He, and I'm not really here for bits. Huh. Okay, so then, then that way I'm the Naomi. <laughs> you know? You do bits, bitch. <laughs> yeah, but you, you're the one who's just pulling them out, and I don't want them in my life. <laughs> I'm constantly on. So you gotta say, honey, I get off the clock, and I'm off the clock. The, same. I come home, I take off my pants, I we let have my a punch card. Out. I do, I do take off the punch my pants. card in. It says five o'clock. There's a whistle. Do you see what see, I this mean? Is a bit. This, this is a bit. This is a bit. This is a bit. It's not accurate, and I wasn't ready. Well, you know? I feel like everyone should know we don't have a old school 1980s punch card system no, with a no, you're correct, Flintstones-esque Andy. whistle. You're correct, <laughs> but we didn't necessarily need to go to a Flintstones pay- place. I was already discussing my disrobing routine. <laughs> 
and that was you, fun. It's and true. That was vulnerable. You, you took it to a Andy, Flintstones place. How dare you? And that is very Bo and Yang. He's <laughs> always taking it to a Flintstones place. <laughs> I listen. There's at least one Flintstones ref each app. There, I love there, that. I love that. <laughs> Flintstones is a part of culture. It is. And Truly. We, we have we talked about the Flintstones We've on here? We've not talked about Hanna Barbera in the, the slightest. <laughs> We've not even touched on Hanna Barbera. Where's all the Muttley talk? There's. What can is I, Muttley? See, Mut- half the time I don't know the reference. I and that's me with Bowen. So that is also that is no. That's whenever, me with you. I grew up without cable, and I'm always like, "What the fuck are you talking bitch, about?" Bitch, you're always using a big word. Oh God, I feel like we're playing Risk. There's so many there changing so many alliances. <laughs> this is crazy. It's crazy that only two of us are gonna walk out of this room. Oh no, that's the most crazy thing about it's this. It's gonna whole be thing. me and Bowen, I think. Oh, oh, why do you think I would die? <laughs> now we're on the same side. I don't know. You would trust me. Your death. Would be accidental and by your own hand. Friendly fire. <laughs> it, it would be. It would so truly. wait, what's my death? Oh no, you obviously wouldn't know your own lack. You of would strength. self-immolate. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, sir. But Naomi was going. You to wouldn't know your own lack of strength. <laughs> like I gotta be like Andy would go in not realizing. <laughs> no, you do have strength, but in various arenas. And if you don't go into the right arena. Something could go down. Absolutely. Oh. You have to really make sure that you're in the right arena. That's a rule of culture number 49. You have you to really, really make sure you're, you're in the right, right arena. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. I... This is interesting. This is a. This is. We've had a, a couple of you know duo guests. Yeah. Um, two guesters uh, episodes, but this is an interesting one. I prefer one. it. I prefer it. Interesting. I, they're interesting. They're, this is the first one where the permutations of the, the, the alliances, the agreements... Is 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 constantly the game is, the game is a foot. Game is a foot. <laughs> I think we can say right now that the game is a foot. Absolutely. Oh my god! Is this going to be a murder on the Orient Express? Only good. Yes. It's absolute. <laughs> the title of that title of that murder Wonderful. on, on the, this Orient Express. I okay. Oh, well, that With was the seven murder wise. on the Borient Express. Borient. Wow. Because the oh, oh, I got it. And there and there it is. And there's, there's the bit. A, there's the pun. And there's the pun. And you there's took it pun. to a bit place. You took it to a Flintstone place. <laughs> <laughs> this Flintstone multivitamin bit. Uh, what a it's a living. <laughs> it's wow, a living. it's a living. Can I tell you something about therapists? And I did share this on on this on stage. I am scared. I don't know what kind of therapist I would want because I, if it's a man and that he's gay, I would think I would want that because I want them to understand, like, yeah, you know, maybe some hangups I have. But you would want to in fuck. certain ways. But I would sexualize my therapist. But what if he was old? I don't know. Then that's that. ageist. That makes you an ageist. See, but stop getting in my head. I have to unpack Sorry. this therapy. <laughs> you have to unpack Sorry, okay. it. I can't win in this town. Are you oh afraid, God. Matt, are you afraid of changing as a person? I've been afraid of changing. <laughs> yes, very much so. I'm very scared of change, actually. Are you my therapist? Uh, I <laughs> could be. Okay. 50 bucks. 50. <laughs> For an hour, he tell you. Are, wait, are you, are you, Naomi, are you doing couples and individual? I have to find a new person since we moved to LA. Because I was it. Skyping. Oh. We actually, we Skype with our couples therapist who's uh-huh. still in New York because he's just that good. He's we just couldn't that give good. him up. He is that we couldn't And Andy, up. are you are you trying to d- have the same setup where it's couples and individual? I got to find a new, my my therapist here in New York, you know, I, when we moved to LA, I was like, thank you, we're done. And uh-huh. she's great. She was great. But I need someone now who's going to like push me a little more. Yeah. I like that see. was, yes. she listened. She was like, are you sure you want to, do you want to change the, your relationship with your parents or do you want to <laughs> just let it be this uh, icy detente until they. Oh, icy icy detente. Okay, Coming that, to, to the stage. Icy detente. That was a Bowen move. That was uh, a Bowen can we move. have a Ooh. suggestion <laughs> where icy detente? Oh no, God. honey, a drag queen. <laughs> Andrew, okay, when hey. I said you could come do this podcast with me, I told you to read up Have you and guys watch wait, several What a great episodes. game. Have you guys ever done this game? Improv team name or, or drag, drag queen, queen name. That's really good, actually. That's very good. <laughs> Thank you. In your face, my love. <laughs> in your face, my love. That, that is, might be the title of that. In your face, my love. In your face, my love. And that's the phrase that we use. Yes, and I love just, it is being written down as we speak. <laughs> I think Emma is writing it down. Emma is on the we notes. Have, we have a hot producer, Emma. Yes, HPE. Ooh. HPE. <laughs> and of course, HPA is sitting over there in the corner. He said he's going to stay for the first 20 minutes. Sorry, bitch. Sorry, we couldn't be more... Uh, <laughs> entertaining yeah. for you. He needed to be compelled. He needed to be compelled. And Walking no, out of callbacks. No, don't. Look, he's he looks emotional. sad like a He's puppy. watching Succession on his phone Every, right now. <laughs> everyone is really raw tonight in this yeah, room. true. Oh, we're delicate tonight. Yes, we are. We are. Yeah. And it's, that's okay. And this is what therapy is about. Right. It's about coming and being real with your rawness because honestly, right, 
I love what was really great about your set, and we don't have to keep harping on it, but no, it please. is the the real, the 10-year history. And what we're constantly telling comics when we ask them to come is like, mm-hmm. if if you're a comic, right, and so you have the ear for what's funny or when to stop or when to move on, that's fine. But if you have two people with a shared history, you don't have to. Oh. Yeah. The humor is gonna come, yes. right? Like if you're just like honest with it, and you guys bring so much to the table, especially you know, obviously you're so comfortable working together. But then it's just I didn't know you guys went until you said I didn't know you guys went back to NYU days. Oh yeah, yeah. I did yeah. not know that at all. So I was like, oh my god, a decade. A we've decade. been we've been friends for a decade. You guys were sumptuous. Crazy. You were a twelve course meal of comedy uh, and emotions. Ooh, ooh, wow. so. We could have kept going too, honey. <laughs> Oh, that I was know, the there surface. Was plenty more. I know, and I was also like, I was like, I was like, just let them go. But then we were like, no, oh, no, but we no. have to go. But it was like, <laughs> I need to know more. It was the perfect length of show. It was truly <laughs> ninety minutes max Maximum. in this community. ninety Live. minutes max. Oh, I totally agree with I, you. Like, anything, well, I don't think Sony often goes two hours, but but sh- but that's a special like little. It's a special event, yeah. and you're getting so many people. Yes, yeah. right. But this like anything. No one, no one is that funny for that long. Uh, yes, yes. Nothing yes, is. Nothing is. Nothing uh, is. I totally agree. But I mean, uh, you're getting so an many... Adam Sandler film. Oh, well, okay. Oh, sorry, Andy. wait. We, All we right. forgot. <laughs> Why do I have to throw shade at Adam Sandler? I like Happy Gilmore. And I like. <laughs> we love yeah, Adam. And, uh, what's the other one? <laughs> Your dear friend Adam. Your dear friend Adam. What's dear the other one? There's no reason to. That's like using Carrot Top as a. He's a nice man. man. Who are like the the icons of comedy? So it's like, I guess that that did movie after movie. There was obviously Adam Sandler. Yes. I guess what you could say Ben Stiller. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Ferrell. He was a little after them, but yes. And then there was another one. I'm not one woman. Terrible. Hmm. Who did movie after movie? did movie after movie. Yeah, terrible, wow. terrible. I guess now we have Schumer. Well, now we sure. have Melissa McCarthy. Melissa she's, McCarthy. She's, she's, movie, yes, movie, yes. Movie, movie, she's got a lot of movies. Oscar yes. buzz. For what? Can Life you the ever party? forgive me? Oh. She is in a biopic that's coming out. Apparently, it's a, dra- it's a dramatic turn from Ooh. her. They're saying, even in a crowded field this year, that Melissa McCarthy is a shoe in for Best Actress nomination. Wow. Alongside our, our favorite. Al Gaga. Ms. Gaga. No, wait. What Al the Gaga. biopic? Who is she portraying? I, uh, uh, Lee. Oh, yeah. Well, Iacocca. Um, Not exactly. Uh, a wo- yes, a woman. Mm, she would like do an forgeries. Author. Yeah, she, she would do forgeries. She was a, she, she f- uh, was a forgerer. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. I and heard of you know, Brandon Scott Jones is in that movie. <gasps> what? Right. Yes. What? He is. He's, oh has a scene with her. Oh my god. He's in the trailer as well. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, I, we saw the trailer for this. It looks great. And I remember hearing about the film because she had Oscar buzz for it. And then when I saw the trailer, I was like, Oh my god, there's BSJ. Oh my there's god. BSJ. Is that why he's yeah. hanging out with Rebel Wilson? Uh, no, he's hanging out with Rebel Wilson because uh, he shot a movie with her that. I'm in where I play his boyfriend. <gasps> You're only in a for, picture? Only at the very end. And he sent me, he, he texted me a photo of our scene and I look disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> no. I look so bad. <laughs> By I, and see, this is what's crazy and this is why I need therapy is because Bowen has now centered the conversation around, around himself. <laughs> And I was trying to celebrate a friend. You know what I mean? Like, and that's really so toxic. You are making fun of me now. <laughs> no, I'm not making fun. I'm saying my truth, and this is therapy. Oh like, my no, god! Because now, because now, look at it, Naomi and Andy. They're just like, what do we do? I can't talk about the film. Well, no, no. I was no. like, thinking, you know, I'm Andy's, like, Andy's ready because he's a fucking judge with a gavel. He's like, I'll tell you who's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is. Come on. And no, me, no. I, I was wanna... feeling it, like when you seeing like whenever I see myself in something, I'm like, oh, I'm gross. Yes, that that's that that's just how I am. Because well, you know we we all have everyone has. Yes. It's very common. Everyone has that thing where it's yeah. like you I can't a, hear your yeah. voice or you can't. I have a very intense process in the morning of like looking myself in the mirror and being like, yeah. "You can go out there into the world." Oh <laughs> god! Okay. Oh, he takes longer to get ready than I do, and I think it's really? more, it's the mental game. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, I think it's yeah because I'm always like, "What are you doing in there?" And once you explained to me it was a mental psyching yourself up, I said, "Go ahead." But honestly, mm-hmm. that's so much work, though, Andy. You, you just let that go. Who that's cares? so much easier said than done. I that's that was the big thing in my therapy in the the first five letting years go, of therapy. Letting go. Yeah. What does that mean? Because it's a it's a metaphor. It's a physical metaphor. But what does that mean mentally or emotionally? Mentally, this is what it means. It means a thought a thought crosses your mind, and it's not about not feeling. It's not about just rejecting it so knee jerkily. But it's just about acknowledging it, holding it, letting it take up a sp- take up space, and then just letting it back out. Right. But what does that just what, not, what is the process? Is there a physical? If there was a physical, if it was like 
I know, if it was I know. Like defecating, I, and I could understand. Andrew. Sure, I'm not. I, I know. I, I used a technical term. I'm not. I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but it, like in my practice, it's just been like, oh, like I can just for a little bit longer not think about it until I have to think about it again. And, and, and inevitably, you will think about whatever the thing is again. But how do you excrete that feeling? It's not about excreting. It's not about. It's not about expelling. It's just about. Just, uh, just taking it, letting it back, letting it back out into the wild, and then it will, it will come back at some point, and then, then you'll do, do the same thing. Well, later. this is why therapy. That is the part of therapy that makes me crazy because I kept feeling like I am giving you money to fix me, uh-huh, you know, right? uh-huh, and uh-huh. you are not fixing me. I don't yes. feel fixed. <laughs> I don't feel fixed. Shit. Yeah. This you're, is you're, a copay. You're not paying us, by the way. I'm no, and that's why that <laughs> yeah. part's great, right? Yeah, the beauty yeah, yeah. of a podcast. Yes. You're just here for the circular. The reason why I've <laughs> never I really be fixed. Yes. Yeah. The reason why I've never really sat down and actually went, and now I think I, that is going to change. I feel like I must go, um, is because I've always been pretty good at knowing why I feel the way I feel, mm-hmm. or at least that's what I've always told myself. Right. And I've always been pretty good at, um, you know, bouncing back. You know yeah. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it, I, I, I'm like even now, like this is like not a good time for me. I get weird seasonal depression in August and September. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Going back to school feeling. It's it's maybe in, that. It's like in your brain from it's a ingrained. young age. Yeah. Yes. It could be that. But like I because I know that this this is this is what happens to me now, I'm like, well, it's what happens to me now. I'll I'll get better. But I'd rather not feel that every year. Right. For two yes. months at yeah. a time. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. I mean, well, what you were saying though about comments, for instance, I, you know, since we've started podcasting, mm-hmm. you know, I can't read the comments. I've never read the comments, but I've got we got one and I've actually gotten a little bit better at it. And this is where I'm like, well, maybe I'm slightly more fixed than I thought I was, right? Mm-hmm. Because in the day to day doesn't feel right, but we got a comment where it was like, literally the person said, my new goal in life is to never hear these hosts' voices again. <laughs> it's and so weird. Enough. They get so creative with their negativity. But, <laughs> but then they're, they're not. But then right. it's like a stupid hack like thing. So but it's also like, you know, I guess what it is, the comment is, there are plenty of things I don't like. Mm-hmm. Many people are dead to me. Yeah. Most people are garbage. <laughs> but I have never felt compelled to say that no. to yeah. go on a public forum and create an account. Yes. To post a nasty comment. Yeah. And so I think that's what it's like, wow, the level of hatred you must feel. Mm-hmm. That's what is shocking to me, right? Yes. Like that's what shakes me to my core. Right. So then how are you more fixed to that? Oh, because you don't you don't have to do well, that. Well, because now, so now I was like Okay, that is one human. That person's not well. Yes. Yeah. As opposed to being like, is there a way to surgically change my voice? Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine yeah, finding yeah. out that the commenter was Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> like I found out that Barack started listening to the podcast and was like, I need to tell Matt Rogers that he is annoying and I hate him. Yeah. Did you do that just to do your impression? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to check. But this is okay, but Naomi's talking. I want about- SNL to hear it for next year. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Naomi's touching on something that I have found very useful is the quickest way to like not care is to take pity. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. And you're just like, like this person who left that I hate you comment like couldn't spell worth a damn. They couldn't spell oh, the word Here's excellent. what I That's did. True. I went and looked at two dope queens mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, here's like one of the most popular podcasts. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's look at their comments. Oh, and it was God. similarly filled with hatred. And I was like, oh, Okay, so hatred it, born of itself, like n- not uh, not in reference to anything in particular. Right, just monsters, right, just, just monsters attitude. full yeah. of poison who need to get the poison out. Otherwise, yeah. they'll just like die in their parents' basement. What it's not, whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's I know. Not always, I know. It's, it's not always like someone like, in a basement. It's like no, they could be like a very you know functioning, successful person living above ground, right? <laughs> who just has hate in their heart. Who's just yeah, yeah like, who's just like a <laughs> scorpion that's backed up. And it's just and it's and it's it, and when I say take pity, it's different from like. Like trying to like, uh, make them, like right? You don't have to like make them bad. Totally. You don't have to be like, oh, like what? It you must have a lot happening yes. that this is, or not enough happening. Not enough yeah. happening. <laughs> this is the cross to bear that I'm your problem. Totally. Right. But Honey, point, if I'm your biggest problem, bless. That's, that's Can I say exactly. one thing though? I do think there are trolls for us. Oh really? I don't want to go into the whole thing, but there are. I, I believe that there are. I hear you. I believe yeah. that there are trolls specifically. Yeah, who are happy with us. Who are trolling you in what way? Because of because of it being in an interracial relationship. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that yeah. what you're saying? Listen, <laughs> well, you don't have to look at we it. We don't have to get it. Let's just say it. let's just say there are trolls okay. without, yeah, yeah. without going it that are specifically targeting us. Got it. Yeah. That there sucks. are there that are people sucks. who might like not like us, and that's fine. That's... But there are also there's a subset 
that mm-hmm. are specifically where it's like, us. oh, that's uh, that's that's this, and we right. can feel that it's this. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is you came for. You're like, okay, well, cool. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's you're not trying to like dunk on them or anything. You're yeah. just like, oh, my God, oh you're this collective. Ra- you're just a rat king of disgusting thought. <laughs> a, rat. a rat king, king of, of disgusting, disgusting thought. thought. That's like, why I I'm it. so proud of Bowen. <laughs> he has that, he had that just in him. He wow. said, he, he could describe a gross person as a rat No, king. a group of people. Wow. A group of people yeah. are this Even like, better, a true. rat king of disgusting thought. I mean, it's it's artistry, it's eloquence, it's, it's poetry. It's beautiful Stop. art. It's psychically tethered. There's psychic tethers wow. are, are all tied yeah, together. Well. And there you what go. Is, what is, okay, here's, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make this beautiful right now. <laughs> what is the most beautiful thing about Andy? Oh. Oh my God. I would say the most beautiful thing about Andy is his optimism and work ethic. Yes. Combined, you are someone who keeps at it. I am someone who literally is like, "Take me now!" <laughs> literally, the tiny, the tiniest, tiniest mm. failure. Take me now! Uh, I can't be bothered. Yes, and I don't, and I don't think it is like this, like white male cockiness. Give it to me. It's a true like, I enjoy this work. Yes, and that joy means good. It will bear fruit. Yes, yeah. and that you will know? see you through for yes. the rest of time. That's beautiful. Andy is Andy Beckerman is one of the hardest working people. Yes, that's wow. true. Slay bitch. Slay, slay bitch. Slay, slay, slay bitch. That yes, it's true. Now you must say the most what beautiful you love. thing about Naomi. <laughs> yes, I will. I'm legit speechless. So thank you. Wow, that's, that's very nice oh, of all of you. Um, <laughs> he like he's uh, for the listener. He is like covering himself with a hoodie because he feels beautiful. very vulnerable. He feels vulnerable. Oh, totally, yeah, totally vulnerable. Well, this is couples therapy, so <laughs> open up. Vulnerable to the max. <laughs> There's a lot about Naomi. I'm trying to like pick oh. one, I mean, I might, one specific thing to say. Wow. I might get emotional. Wow, I'm gonna cry. I mean, the thing that I always <laughs> say is Naomi's freedom with her emotions, and that's the thing I most admire about her. And so I think that is the most beautiful thing that you are. Even when I lay in bed all day because I'm depressed. <laughs> I mean, I feel that's freedom. That's too free. <laughs> I feel for you in those moments, but I just mean the your ability to, as someone who who was repressed for most of his life mm. um, to have uh, it is a joy to have you in my life Aww. as a I mean as for you in your entire three dimensionality <gasps> but also as this as this person who is almost like uh, you know leading me through the Hades of emotions <laughs> leading me through the nine levels another yes, poetic moment another poetic a truly poetic moment, moment. you guys I, think- I, I totally poor Gina Corgina. <laughs> Truly. Corgina. That was a beautiful, beautiful moment to witness. You guys. I'm so happy I asked that question. Will you officiate? Will you both will officiate? officiate. Yeah, <laughs> You've really will. drawn out. And then Bowen will tell me afterwards that I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> what if we had a, what if we had Naomi a string of officiants that would each do a different part of the ceremony? That would be good because it would be the different parts of us. Yeah. That's great. We really want to do our, like, I don't want it to be like like fucking quirky. I'm not coming at you with a Deschanel moment, right. but I do want to. No, like little mandolins. Yes. Yeah. Like, okay, no. But we are not, you are not a new girl. You are an old girl. Yes, Hello? Yes, I'm yes. an old girl. That's my show. Oh. That's me living with three men being like, get out my house. <laughs> but all I want, like, I do want a wedding that is very reflective of our personalities and yeah, not the cookie fun. cutter. Fun. But what I found as, you know, we looked at venues, the more personal stuff is, even when it looks DIY, it's actually more expensive yeah, than if yeah, you just went yeah. to a hotel. Because those places, they do weddings for a living. They got a fucking whole setup. You just pick. It's like you want the you want the uh, plates to be buff, taupe, or beige. You know what I mean? Like they have a whole fucking family. You pick yeah, the yeah. Thing. That shit There's, that feels custom is custom, and you yeah. pay for that exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There was a place in Long Island that we looked at that was actually pretty affordable. Yeah. Where? Where on Long Island? Um. It's called Fox Hollow, so I don't. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget where it nothing, was. We're not, not going to say anything bad about that. Yeah, yeah. They were so it, it, it was nice. It was affordable, and there was great. Like you could, it, part of the package was like people coming in got some food. Like when you were coming to the ceremony, uh-huh. yeah. so if you were hungry, you could get through the ceremony. Yes. At the end, you got warm pretzels as you were leaving, and so there were like cute. all so these cute. different things. But it was just very like cookie cutter. Yeah. Like there we were, couldn't do much in between. Like I'm all for like mm. feeding people all the time, but they were like. During the receiving line, we'll do this. And I was like, but we're not doing a receiving line. We don't line. want a receiving line. And we don't want like, a first dance. We but, don't want like a daddy daughter <laughs> dance or whatever it is. Yeah. But daddy, they, call, they call it the daddy daughter dance. Daddy daughter dance. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but they like, that's the package, right? Like you get sure, that thing. Right, and it was right, like, right. 
And I was like, oh, I want to do something a little different. But then I was like, okay, you want to go like buy chairs and rent caterers and like every little bit Mm -hmm. and piece. Mm -hmm. And it's been definitely like a thing that we're like, we've been engaged five years. (laughs) And that is definitely part of it. That, yes, like, and it's under completely understandable. Yeah, you want it to be the culmination want? of the long engagement. No, but I'm saying like the wedding, it, just yeah. planning it is truly crazy, yeah. Yeah. but unnecessary. Yes, but I there's no say. way around it because literally you call a venue, and the moment you say wedding, it's this, this, and this. You say party, it's another thing. Yeah. Right? But if you show up there, the moment they see you in a dress, mm-hmm. oh, they gonna start tacking on them feet. Yeah, there's God. no way to really like make that lie last. Yeah, 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 You're, yeah, it's, yeah. it's an industry, <laughs> and it's yeah. gonna be an industry wherever you go. Yeah. So it was just like okay. until the end of time. I Maybe will... we should ask our agents to call <laughs> and see yeah. if they can negotiate, right? For, on our behalf, uh, please. <laughs> then they'll have to they'll get ten percent of everyone's gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, I know people who oven. have had their manager like organize their bachelorette parties. And really? Stuff. Like, absolutely. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. I would no, ne- would never. I could never. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> neither would I. But like, it's happened. It can be done, right? <laughs> um, I I've been to I would say I've been to many weddings, but the thing is, like, I there was one that I think was like so perfect, mm. and it was my cousin Jesse's wedding. Mm. It was outside, and it was like not religious and it was like they she walked down the aisle to um somewhere over the rainbow but yes, the hawaiian the version. version yes it was so beautiful and i think some people might think that's like basic but it was gorge yeah. mm. um it was so gorge and like she looked so good and like it was like just great i got to walk my grandmother down the aisle Aww. like it was just so it was so good and then like honestly what i love is you have the wedding, and then like a, it's like a hundred yards away is the party space. Yes, it's yeah. not. Yes. It's not multi-purpose. Yes, but it's not far. Like right. it's on site. Yes. yes, yes well, yes. I mean, I want it to be a one-stop shop, definitely. Yes. You must. And just like I also want it to be that type of wedding. I don't want a wedding where I don't know half the people there. No, Do you know what no, I mean? No, where like the parents no. need, but it's like, can you please just no. like? Well, that know, was the problem. I, we're not going to go we into that go because into that's it. what our own podcast is for us going into <laughs> the yeah. parental. But you don't know the- bring it to Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> it was like yabba dabba do. Oh, <laughs> bits, bits. It's, it's it's always disgusting the bits. with these bits. Disgusting. <laughs> but no, I mean, you guys, you know, you have a magical friendship dynamic for the ages. It's a fun dynamic. And we sure I, I tweeted today in, in light of all this Burton Ernie news. <laughs> Matt and I are both Bert, Burton Ernie and Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> that is true. That, that we contain multitudes. That is true. Wait, what yes. happened with Burton Ernie? Oh, uh, the the right the creator of the right the one who the person who conceived of them has said in an interview recently that he only thought of them as being a couple. Oh, okay. And as a gay man, he was like, "Yeah, they were." I wrote them as a couple. But then, but then Sesame Workshop, like the the larger institution behind right. Sesame Street, said put out a statement said. No, as we've always said, <laughs> they are best friends. They are not gay. Um, while they do identify as male and share many qualities with human beings, they remain puppets and do not possess sexual orientation. Which is crazy <laughs> because every puppet has so, like, every puppet on that show has characteristics. Like, They're like a, one a of Puerto them Rican. is, like, autistic. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We right. just talked about this on the last episode. But it's just crazy to... To pretend project all right. these these certain identity politics and then not and this then, one, yeah, it's right? Crazy. And it they're just all feels just brimming, very antiquated to me. Brimming with eros and orgone and all that kind of <laughs> energy <laughs> again with the Greek poetry. <laughs> I mean, all the time. Wait, here's a question though. Um, now, personally, the idea of representation in children's um, cartoons yes. or in children's programming uh-huh. is appealing. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, I don't like when adults go back and like retcon sexuality into oh, children's we were, things. We were talking about J.K. Rowling in the last episode, yeah. She, how she's kind of doing that a little bit. I, I mean, if it's there, well, with J.K. Rowling, like she should have just written it in there. Like sure. that's her own cowardice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, but, one might say that she did. Right. Yeah, you but, could go. Yeah. But there's nothing, like literally you cannot sexual, there's some nothing I hate more mm-hmm. than when someone says their child their toddler, their baby is flirting, yeah, or is um a lady killer, oh, she, like anything for a baby. She's or gonna break toddler. hearts. Yeah, you're like what? It's like can yeah, you? Yeah, don't please? say that because what you're doing is you're attaching sexuality to my kid. Yeah, exactly. Or even parents do it to their own kid. And it's you know, they're trying to be like, and it's just like He's can you break not yeah. do that? You know, but the same person who does that. Will then have a problem with a with a puppet being possibly gay. Oh, 100 percent. It's like you already told me your baby be fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, how are you gonna put 
that out there. And it gives a kid a complex. A little bit. Kind of, I mean, of course it does. I yes. can say that it does. Because it's like it attaches the fact that your looks are something that you should yes. always be conscious of. Yes, yes. Because that's what they always say. Like Kelly Clarkson was recently quoted in an interview as saying, like, I never tell my daughter, you look beautiful. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. I say, you're so smart. You're so con- you're so funny. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you're so uh-huh. this. Because it's important to instill... You know, and I'm sure there's like this is like new wave parenting. Like, like uh, lots of parents raising kids now know right. this, but it's like this is the first time I was woken up to it. But growing up, you know, handsome, like of course, s- like mm-hmm. it's cute, uh, attract. You know that it gets attached to you at such an early age, and you, when you're forming, you look in the mirror, and then you become conscious of that as one of the things that you're like good at, sure. right? And then yeah. you know, I think it happens with women. A ton. Well, I was gonna say definitely your value system. I don't know about you. I mean, Andrew, I have seen photos. You're a darling boy. Um, I've seen. What still happens. is? What still happens? Is. No. Stop. But but no. When you were younger, like friends, I was not like I was not cute or pretty. Not that was, true. That was not the Untrue. way. Untrue. I've yeah. seen pictures. But that's not how I was talked about. Right. You know, like I had like you know my cousin Simmons like oh she's cute she's pretty she's this that was never the way I was characterized. Mm-hmm. So even you know now as an adult it's not where I kind of put my stock or yep. it was also not just not where I put my stock but I just assumed the opposite was true. Mm. Right. If no that's, one was saying it, that's which thing. is exactly what I'm saying. Which is right. it gives kids a complex either yeah. way. Either and there's right. nothing you can really do about it I know. because people are still going to be who they are and that's something you say when you th- and you, you're trying to be nice yeah. right but it's just that thing it's just like no matter what you're going to be fucked up somehow stimuli right. you're going to respond to it somehow i'm just saying that yeah it's it's when you say that to someone and you, mm. and, and they're a child right. and they have a childlike understanding of these things right it's exactly. a symptom of a sick culture that's going down the tubes and you know what some babies be fucking some babies be fucking i was fucking (laughs) from a young toddler age sure (laughs) who was it not people but things yeah Yeah. (laughs) who didn't put their consent was not a concept (laughs) who didn't put their wiener into i rubbed it on so many strange (laughs) things i used to fuck the shit out of my pillows and that's a fact yeah (laughs) well pillows yeah pillows are great I used to put some minimal. I had a relationship with one of my pillows for three years. What are those things? Longer than I was with Henry. Wait, Andy has a question. There, there were these little. It's like constructs or Legos, but they were like these tubes that, Uh like, uh, what are those mugs that like get pushed down with like accordion? It's like made of plastic. Something collapsible. Yeah, these little collapsible things. You could put your penis in them if you were a kid. You fucked it. I would. I, I, no I would say I fucked it. It fucked I, you. There was no. <laughs> exactly. Also, was this the purpose? You said you could put your you penis could. in them if you were a kid. And one sure. of the things on the box <laughs> was, was, it, was that. Yeah. You could put your it was penis. like, but it was like. Hey, just tell you that batteries not included. You can fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> it was teaching you how to how to use a condom almost, but yeah, it was like right, a construction right, right. thing. Oh. Fun, not really. But I'm fun. saying, well, an adult penis wouldn't fit in them. No, I too can. big. <laughs> oh my god. Have you ever seen an adult penis, Naomi? Yep. They're huge. So then. You're, you're just, you're just, are you asking this rhetorically? Like, <laughs> he is telling you an example of a toy that you, that could... you could, as a young toddler child. Or that I yes. did. Or that he did. I yeah. didn't want to put you on blast. I wanted that to be your story to tell. We're very open on I this would... podcast. We say what we fucked. Yes. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that I fucked it. I would right. say that it I was underst- just a, I was exploring. It depends on what is, is, as Bill Clinton would say. <laughs> Great question. Is, is. Oh God! What it was was oh, yeah. what it is is, is. oh <laughs> utterly meaningless. <laughs> truly, so truly. Meaningless. that that was like national news. National. Slick Willie. Oh God! Slick oh, Willie indeed. God. Okay, I think we we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna adapt the question that we always ask on this podcast, but to both of you as a collective unit. And then we might, and then I think we might, this I, is Bowen saying he's done with the conversation about fucking inanimate objects. And honestly, I respect it. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. This, slay, bitch. Now, uh, Continue and to then slay. I, okay, so I want to ask, what was the culture that made both of you say culture is for me? But this is to ask. Oh wow, was I know there, where you're going. Was with there this. something that you guys experienced culturally together early on, or even like later on or recently that sort of set things off in a new direction? Does that make sense? What was the culture that like you what, said culture was for us as a couple? As like like was there a movie that you guys saw together like right, right, right. or like it was uh loving getting the uh, nomination <laughs> for the Academy Award? <sighs> That's not true. What? What is this? I love bits. 
Loving the, the movie, loving the oh. mo- movie, loving about the interracial Sorry. couple in the he south. He is and doing this is a bit. The, well, sometimes the bits are close to real, and it's very hard to tell. And yeah. sometimes the the bits have ambiguous syntax because you said it was loving as in the verb loving and right. instead of the title okay, no the proper of course noun. no it is it is ignore him i live in a world of ambiguity guys wow uh, we know this gorgeous we know this what i think is important for us to come on here as a couple is to let the listeners know anything is possible and Absolutely. you never know where you'll find love and connection yes Ooh. you know the most unlikely places one time andy and i were on the street Early in our, and we like we kissed and this old black lady looked at us. She goes, "That's beautiful. <laughs> you never know where you find love." <laughs> She's an icon. Ooh, we need to track her down. Her. No. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> no. Do you guys have a hotline? Tell her to call in. <laughs> yes. I wish we did. And she'll be like, "I remember seeing them. I talked about it for days." <laughs> she was like, "You never know." And I was like, "Thank you I love so that. much." And I was like, "Oh my god, Andy." We are a post-racial America. Yeah, it was back when people thought that was a thing. <laughs> right, of course, of course, of back, course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. About 2009. Uh, but when culture was Gorgeous for year. us, I mean, there were definitely things, for instance, the moment we got together where I was like, oh, we have more in common than we think. Mm. The first time I went to his house, I saw that he had the entire series of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel on DVD. Wow. And I was like, you and I could be friends. I loved Buffy. Yeah, I yeah, was like yeah, so yeah. into it. I never finished Angel. So literally the first thing I did when I got to his house, at the end I was like, can I borrow your DVD? Which you know is like, I'm going to see you again. Yeah. And so, you did it. You planted the seed. And, you, and exactly. Andy knew. Exactly. Yes. And so that was definitely the beginning, like a cultural touchstone of like, oh, we share this interest from our past. Mm. From my point of view, from being the weirdo in the relationship, <laughs> it was Strangers with Candy. It was the fact that we both oh. like Strangers with Candy. Okay. And that we both yeah. bonded over loving Amy Sedaris. <gasps> That's true. That was definitely one that we were like, okay. That is so a thing. These are like, both when solid. you're talking to someone new, it's so exciting to find out that you have like, whether it's like something from your past or a strong interest together, because it truly, it gives you something just to talk about. Yes, Definitely. Yes, yes. And especially I think something, I think you're right with Strangers with Candy, because not only was it a long time ago, like 99, mm-hmm. but I remember like not a lot of people watched no. it. It, was, nope. it honestly probably Cult. wasn't until I got into comedy that I started to meet people yes. who watched that show. Agreed. It wasn't until college for me that people would be like, oh my God, like they'd be like, I stole the TV. And I'd be like, where, what's that from? <laughs> and then they'd be like, Strangers with Candy. And I was like, oh my God. I think and then Jenny Jaffe was the person that brought that to my attention. Henry Melcher was the first person. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Exactly. Pizza, pizza. So I was like, pizza, yeah. pizza, pizza, pizza. Such a wacky genius. Oh my God. Brills. Brills, brills, Truly. brills. And so that was definitely it. Those are great answers. And it's interesting that that's sort of refracted from either person that it's like oh i i thought it was buffy i thought it was strangers with candy but there's also it like melds into each other like it flows into in this in the way that like i'm like yes i see what you, i i get it totally. and yes it was for me too right. especially like the buffy musical yeah. which naomi was in in college <laughs> i was <gasps> a stage version of the buffy oh musical. my god the, the oh, episode. oh like the that's demon. amazing oh my god i have a feeling what you feel girl Oh! It was like very like that. It was like doing like that. Like whoa. you're giving me like <laughs> characterized beautiful vibrato. Yes, with character, with emotion. Lady Day contours. <laughs> Lady Day. Um, that episode I watched watched recently. Um, I, I, under in like a very intimate setting with someone else because he was like because I I'm starting to get into I'm trying to get into Buffy starting to get into something it sounds like well, and then and he and he fucking loves it and right. I was like yeah okay I'll start watching with you and yeah. then we were both just very wine drunk and then he <laughs> but he put on the musical episode he's like you're gonna love this mm. and I was like yeah great and then like halfway through I was like wow I can't believe Joss Whedon wrote all the music and I just <laughs> fell asleep and I, Passed out. I, Passed out. I also think you cannot watch the musical episode in isolation. It yeah. really does lead up. No. Sure, You've sure, got sure. It, you know, especially. I mean, because that's what Joss is into, honey. He's into taking and on a narrative journey. Up. But it's but is it what is it like season four, or five, six, six? So exactly, I, you came in on late where you're like, you who know. are they and why? I got to tear through a hundred episodes. <laughs> it's that was epi- it? It's that episode they always talk about the silent episode. Yeah, and then and hush, and then the body, which is the one where yes. Sarah Michelle Gellar yes. is dead. That's no, season her five. No. Mother. Oh, her mother, her mother, her mother. Season Which I just five, read like on. a whole piece on that episode the other Ooh. day about how mm. it was like one of the most critically acclaimed episodes of television of that era. Oh, that era. The 90s, I God, guess. God, the 90s was a great time for television. Great time and for I guess that's why they keep trying to make it happen again. <laughs> well, yeah. No, that's yeah. the part. It's like sad, though. It's, it's so like sad. sad. These reboots are hurting my heart. <laughs> I'm not they into are it not, at all. I know. Yeah, I know. it's like too. I think, but I'm also like, 
if you're gonna reboot, mm-hmm. reboot some of my black 90s shows. Yeah. Like, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Where's, family... Where's the reboot of Amen? Of Where's Amen. my reboot? Where's Family Matters? Family Matters, Living Single? If, they if Moesha came back, if that would be the sleigh of oh the Oh my year. God. Who would be the new Moesha? Brandy. Oh, so Brandy is oh, doing so it Brandy again. now. Okay. Got okay. It. I can see that. I can see that she's looking great. You you she's can never do like a goddess. You can never do like a Fresh Prince reboot without no. Will. No. Right. Yeah, well, well, exactly. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was I going to call it? Like, the, uh, what was their last name? What about with Migos? The Banks's. The Banks's. Yeah. What if you had it with Migos? With Migos? <laughs> yeah, so it's three, and they play brothers. Three oh my God, comedic and one, uh, titans and Migos. And, and, and one Homophobes. guy Migos is always getting tossed out the, <laughs> yep. uh, the yeah, doorway. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Jazzy Jeff. Oh That's my God. Bad. Skirt. I, hey, do you think the ad lib guy gets paid as much as a dancer <laughs> in a ska band? But back then? No, the, the, the ad lib guy, guy Migos. in Migos or oh. in a rap band. Who do you think gets paid more? A oh, ad lib. I was like, who are you talking the about? dancer in a ska band or an ad lib guy in a rap group? I'm gonna say Migos. Migos. <laughs> They're like swimming in jewels. Honestly, and I think like the guy in a ska band who just like pick it up, doesn't that, isn't that what they say? And he just like dances or just stomps around. I feel like he's always like a friend who came on the tour. Do you know what yes. I mean? Like he's just there for a hot bed and a hot yeah. meal. <laughs> He's not getting any kind of payment. Right, yeah. right, right. Do you know what? You know what? I'm remembering now. I loved hanging out with Mr. Cooper. Oh yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Because I was a TGIF fan. Yes. Yes. Oh, of course. Do you have a blind spot for that? Because not having cable. Um, but you, you, but that's regular. Yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Channel oh, cool, seven. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like Boy Meets World. Yes. Step by step. The Clueless TV show. The Clueless TV show is great. You are younger than me. Yes, the Clueless TV show. <laughs> that was past. I was, honey, I was coming up on a perfect strangers. Oh, family Matters. Oh, okay. Step by step. I, I think even at one point, matters. was Family Ties in there? I don't no, remember. That's, it was never I think that was on another that was network. NBC. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was NBC right. in the but 80s. Yes. That was like, oh no, all of those. I would watch all of those. Naomi, stuff. in your act, you reference um, Ryder Strong and Angela, I forget her. That yes. Is. Yes. As as like a early interracial couple that you saw in pop culture. Yep. Mm-hmm. The 90s, honestly, it was ahead of its wow. time. Do you, I think that that. That, do you think that that actually put that in your mind as a possibility? That and going to school with white boys. Mm. <laughs> it was a combination of both. Because obviously I was surrounded by these whites. Yes. Um, and these boys weren't checking for me. Yeah. And then I got to watch this TV show where it was happening. And she had like natural hair. I feel like yeah, she no, had she was, or yeah. something. You know what I mean? And I feel like she was also visibly 37. Uh, but yeah, she looked <laughs> older. I'm like, she and they like, all were older. They were but all older, older, but I was yeah. like, oh, you're right, like, right, I feel right. like they were maybe 23 and she might have been 30. But it was like, I could just tell, not that she was old, but like I was like, you're like a mature put a together. Woman. Yeah, she's a woman. Yes, yes. And I was like very into it. Did uh, they address that on the show? Or was it kind of just like... See, that's the thing. Over. I don't think I ever really remember them doing like a special episode of I'm Black, right. You're White. Right, 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 right. Which, is is that like... Is that like magical? To too, pretend, a little too magical. A little to pretend bit? that they've never had that conversation, I think is like... Crazy. Bizarre. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, and the thing... There was something... Um, there was a movie that came out a few years ago, and it had Kerry Washington and Patrick Wilson, and it was oh. it was it was they were had been married for like four or five years. Uh-huh. And the reason why I couldn't get into the movie is because they had a neighbor, they were like a married couple in suburbia, and they had a neighbor who like took issue with the fact that they were interracial. And then it, the movie was pretending like it was the first time they had had the conversation. Wow. And I'm like, that's insane, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. If that was the first time they had noticed pushback, right? <laughs> And it was like it, the, the, the dial, you know, it was like a it was a playwright who had written the movie, uh, and the scenes were very kind of stagey. And I was like, yeah, maybe as a play, where like your sense of dis- your your disbelief is suspended because it's like you want to watch these scenes play out, but like cinematically, it didn't no. work. Also, right. like, honey, we saw Crash. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not even willing to see these scenes play out. Right. You know, Crash. Um, oh. That's like we we dealt with that stuff early on. Well, my favorite though, I now find a silver lining. Oh. Okay, because I noticed black men only like give side eye or say something under their breath like if me and you're walking sure if i'm looking good okay <laughs> wow. if i'm looking good they got a problem when my ass is regular they like take her you know what i God. mean God. and so now God. i'm like i'm like oh if he mad that means my face is beat <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> that's my silver lining. The barometer <laughs> oh my god yeah if you, oh if they're mad that must mean I'm looking Beach good today. Exactly. You must be wanting this. <laughs> That's like right. a rule of culture number 17. If they're mad, mad you're, you're beat. beat. <laughs>
That's whenever I step out of the house. Yes. <laughs> and people are angry at me. I'm like, I must look stunning. <laughs> I must be a sleigh right now. I must be the 10 out of 10 beauty. Absolutely. Was there, wait, is this is this a fair question to ask in reverse with Andy? Like, was there, no. Like, was there, <laughs> right? I mean, like, was there, like, any sort of, like, mental model for you in, in, in that same way or no? Yeah. Like. No, because I was brought up, like, my parents never... They, they, when I was younger, they're like, here's some words that you don't say because they hurt people's feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here's like bad words that you don't say in front of the rabbi, like fuck or whatever. Sure, sure, right. Sure. <laughs> and so I never, I, I, in fact, Naomi's had to be like, it's okay to acknowledge that there are differences between, yeah, like between like black people, there are like, Cultures, cultural yes. differences. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and it's been, it's really like, because in my mind, every everyone is the same. Mm. Sure. And it's real. I don't mean that in a like, a, like mm, I'm colorblind. No, I totally. Don't see but it. like, I don't see. But like, my parents raised me in a way like treat everyone the same. Yeah. And there are no differences. Right. Right. That thing, even of, though that's blatantly false. <laughs> yeah. That thing of growing up and it's like we don't see color. That you can't. That's not a. That's not a good sentence. <laughs> But the well, it wasn't the that. The it wasn't right. that. Right. The intention is good, though. The right? intention is good. Yes, but like when you kind of get into like below the surface of the sentence, right? You're like, oh, I think I've been denying your personhood. Yes, <laughs> exa that's exactly <laughs> what I mean. And it's interesting because like you do see that generation, like my parents' generation, for example, where it's like, uh, you know, pe like when I came out as gay. Like the people will be like, you know, everyone's the same to me. And they say all these things that I have gay friends, or I have black friends, or I have this. And it's all these things that they truly think are helpful. Mm. And it's just like, wow, that's antiquated. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's also not acknowledging my gayness. Right. Totally. It's, that's what it is. It's like, okay, you're like, it's all the same. Well, no, it's not actually. No. And you're it's lumping a different it in with community. Yeah. It's a different experience. Yeah. But you're trying to buy like you're trying to help me by saying I'm just like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. but here's the thing though. The problem with it is that like Whatever is the the locus of culture for a group mm -hmm. is not, it's not monolithic. Blackness isn't monolithic. Gayness isn't monolithic. Right, yeah. So there are some things like that are that you could call gay culture. Yes, right. But that doesn't mean every that doesn't mean every gay man does those things. Mm. Right. That's and so crazy it, it's, that he's making this a bit. I All know. gay men are the same. This is, <laughs> stop with the. Bit. You're making it a bit. Stop with the bit. <laughs> The Flintstones bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> that's a living. <laughs> that's oh god. <laughs> but like that's where it gets yeah. that's that's where the stuff is tricky because yeah. you want to acknowledge that there are differences between groups. Mm -hmm. But once you once you go to that second level, then you have to acknowledge that there are differences between individuals. And just because there, uh, you know, as a group, there may be a tendency for gay men to like. Blank. RuPaul's Drag Race, whatever yeah, 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 it is, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. There, the thing I was thinking of when we were at a friend's house, and I was the only like hetma, hetma, <laughs> hetero hetma. male, hetero male, hetma, 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 and uh, uh, we played Quiplash, and I bombed. Oh, you told me this last yes. time. Yeah, yeah, and there yeah. were a lot, a lot of the punchlines had to do with like Miss Vanjie, and yeah. I was just like, <laughs> oh yeah, you you did not know. And then I was like, okay, this is what we're doing. And then I was like, okay, and then I'm just gonna give you all those. Yeah, you slid right in. Yeah. And yeah. I'm gonna double down on my piss jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like not having. Wow. We recently played. Uh, you weren't there, but when I was last out in LA, I played Quiplash with like the LA gays, uh -huh. and it was uh, you just had to like. Y it's true when you're with a, a group of people, you have to like figure out what they want. Yeah, exactly. And that's how you score points in Quiplash. And like, exactly. like, what do they want? Like a fucking J Joan Collins? <laughs> <laughs> Probably something like that. Yeah, yeah. reference like to a, a, a uh. Tuesday Weld reference or something. <laughs> Oh my god! I don't even know Tuesday Weld. She's yeah. But I that's what like it. Bowen. I count you as like a weirdo. Like I felt something uh -huh. when I when I saw you perform first. Do you remember that show we were? Yeah, what on was it? Max it was... Max Bernstein show. It was Max. Oh yeah, and I fucking I did not know what the hell I was doing at the time. But it 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 really it spoke to my heart, and I I was just being I was doing weird stuff. Was that when when I was doing Alexander Wang or no? Yes. Yeah, that yes. was the first time I ever did. It was really funny. my Alexander Wang impression. It was really funny, and it spoke to my heart, oh. and I'm like. I'm like, oh, you're a weirdo. It feel like, yeah. like it felt good in in my heart, and so <laughs> I, I, there was a good feeling between the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is like, well, that is like, you know, like or you or like Cole or there's like people who are weirdos, and I I don't know if it like fits in like whatever the mainstream, whatever we're calling mainstream gay culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 
So I mean, how does that right. feel? Like, as, as, You're when you turning go to this that... into an episode of Beginnings. That is Andy's <laughs> podcast where he talks to creative people. About. <laughs> about no, no, but let, let me just make this, fin- okay. let me finish this point. When you go below that level of like, uh-huh. okay, there are differences between different cultures. Yes. But then there are individual differences. Like how, what is your relationship then to this mainstream gay culture? Oh, I mean, it's wow. been. I love, wow, what a great question. Oh my God, I want to hear both responses. I <laughs> spent a long time being really resentful of the mainstream gay culture and being like, whatever, it's not for me. I I don't know the supporting actress nominees off the top of my head from <laughs> since 19 whatever. Like, uh, uh, that's also like a crazy reference. But like, I spent a long time sort of not feeling like I was tapped into that or that I did embody any of those things. But now it's just like, now I, I've, now that I've like gotten past that, like I have more room to just like be curious about like, Oh yeah. Like I'm going to follow the Oscars season this year. And just like, just not, not hate it first, not hate it first. I, it was just, it, and it all came from just self-loathing and internalized homophobia. Like it every, I think a lot of queer people go through this journey. Did Some, you go through that journey? Something I've recently Matt? realized about myself is <laughs> yes, that therapy um, session. like I've only I've only like really kind of discovered who I am like in my comedy and in my interactions with people like in the last two, two and a half, three mm-hmm. years. Uh-huh. And I think it's because I've always been able to be myself with Bowen. Mm-hmm. Um and now us doing the podcast and like us just being ourselves together and then involving someone else. And um like when I auditioned for my sketch comedy group, like I was so I had just come out of the clouds of the summer before and I was so scared that they wouldn't put me on the group because I was gay that I didn't do my hair and I wore a shirt with Heath Ledger's face on it as the Joker <laughs> and I wore like a track jacket that 2009, was open. 2009. And I, because I, and I went in with like, a, I, it's kind of a, crazy that I even made the team because I was so performing a performance. Right, right. That like... um. I just I look back at like my work at that time and like who I was at that time and I was like wow how much energy I was mm-hmm. spending Unpassing. trying to connect to to something else and so in that way I I've always been very gay like when I was <laughs> like in middle in elementary school middle school like I was like looking up like who who was winning the Oscars and stuff like yeah. that I was always obsessed I always had an intrinsic thing where I was like I like gay stuff yeah but. Um, not only is there was there the oppression of just like you know homophobia and like kind of the patriarchy that is Long Island. It's like <laughs> then you come to then you come to NYU and like you know the bullies aren't the straight men; they're the gay men. Yeah, and so I didn't want to be around them because they didn't like me. Yeah, and they they kind of like made fun of me. And so then I found the comedy kids who were nice, but I still had to like do drag. You know uh-huh, what I mean? I uh-huh. had to do mask drag with them. Yeah. And it was nothing that they did. Right. But for the first like five or six years, even though I was quote unquote good at what I did in terms of comedy, I look back on that and there's no identity. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. no point of view. You don't think I think so? I'm hitting the jokes, but I don't see any. And look at my You don't have work. your voice. It's not no, your voice. I don't have my voice mm-hmm. at all. And I, it's only recently been... And I know I think people, a lot of people that listen to this podcast, they don't really know me as a comedian. Mm-hmm. They know me as this. Mm. So it's like it's it's a it's a lot to reconcile. And I do think I'm a little delayed in terms of like. No, it's all coming at the right. Time. No, I, I feel right, like it's probably better it's, than I'm thinking it is. Right, right, right. No, Instead, I need therapy. Right, but that's the thing. But right, it's the process, right? But it is very. Oh God, honestly, Andy, I'm into that. You took us to this place. Because I also think <gasps> the listeners. Bitch. I think the listeners also love to hear the side of you. They do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it is the part where you're like, I know them. Mm. And it's tender. I mean, sometimes I listen back to this podcast and I like agree with people saying I'm annoying because I am doing stop. like a gay performance. No, stop. no that's, stop. No, that, that's stop. no. I'm not saying that it's like, but you can hear yourself like when you're not being genuine. Totally, and say mm. well, you, th- yeah. and that is when in your in your an internal mechanism of oh my god, there's so much artifice in what I'm saying in this moment, in this moment, in this moment. I hate that. Ew, I I suck. Mm-hmm. That's just that's always gonna it be there. It's not real. It's yeah. not but right. It's, yeah, and it's the process. Not, it's right, but it's. it's it's only helpful. It's only so helpful. Um, what what am I saying? Oh God, uh, it's it's only as to be as, so self aware. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it is. Um, I have a random question. Yes. Off of this, uh, but I was thinking of uh, I was thinking of you, Bowen, because uh, we didn't, you know, we 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 didn't know the Emmys were going to be on a Monday, I so know. we had our show on Emmy night. 
they, bless we the audience. Gorgeous. We didn't even care. We, we didn't care. We would never have show. missed it. But to be fair, world. Union Hall only gave us one day, and it was <laughs> Emmy <laughs> night. But, but. Um, I thought of you when I was like watching the clips later. Mr. and Mrs. O. Mr. and Mrs. O. Such a slay. Oh, oh my God. So I was wonderful. here for the whole family. And I go, oh, I want to know how Bo would feel. Oh my God. Mr. I, Mrs. O. they seem wonderful. I've, I'm very familiar with Mr. and Mrs. O. Oh, okay. She brings them on. She brings them to talk shows all the time. Oh, um, that was my first time seeing them. Oh, they're so wonderful. Okay. Her, her mom, her mom wore a hanbok. Mm-hmm. Was gorgeous. She looked amazing. Yes, yeah, she did. Oh, it she looked just, amazing. I love that hair. She's a glamorous woman. I love the hair. The hair. She had iconic hair. Yeah. And just, I don't know. It was, it was, it was just very special. And yeah. I hope, I hope it means good things in the future uh, I for so. her. I we can't so. be disappointed about her losing because the thing and is, and the thing like, is, she doesn't give a shit. She doesn't right. give a shit. And also, somebody very deserving did win. Yes. And that's my thing. Is it's like a little bit. I don't think so, honey. Everyone being like, ugh, with the winners. It's like you guys. Television is so good, right? They, they, what are you gonna the, do? The winners, right. like, they're talented. They're all the, you know every, every I mean? category was stacked. But uh, you know who I was gagged one? Tandy Newton. Tandy, oh, come on, I slay! Know. That was wonderful. That was so exciting. So, so good. good. And that's another. That's one of the things I always say every year. I am always pissed when someone that was deserving the first year who loses wins the second year. Me but too. I didn't give a fuck with that. No, <laughs> I didn't care. Also, oh my God, huge, I didn't watch that, Westworld second season, huge that Henry Winkler won. And I love that he said kids go to bed. His kids are in their 40s. <laughs> love that. <laughs> Very funny. I'm obsessed with Henry Winkler's. Fuck. Give me Henry Winkler's Twitter. Him holding varieties of fish he's caught. <laughs> Is literally my favorite thing. It's Lovely. like a vision board. That man is having a great time. Yes. Okay. He has caught a trout. Yeah. He has caught a rainbow trout and he is loving it. And it's just like a beautiful Henry Winkler mm. smile and a fish and oh nothing makes me happier. He's basically playing a version of himself on Barry. Do you, do you guys watch? Yes. Paula Newsom, yes. I think, huge. She plays the detective. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You talked about this. Spoiler alert. She like gets into some stuff with Henry Winkler's character. I how did you feel about that, Naomi? Another interracial couple. Rep- of oh, our interracial. Ty- of Rep- our type. Representation oh, oh, matters. Matter. Jewish, Jewish and black? Yes. Uh, or just why, well, white I mean, and black. <laughs> I mean, I'm Jewish. Well, this is the thing. I was saying on stage, yeah. I didn't realize this. It's it's taken me a while, but like I grew up Jewish in Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. And we're it's different. We're like surrounded by white power groups. Oh, sure, like, sure, sure. It's, they just like, if you had a map, you would just see swastikas dotting the landscape oh, of Pennsylvania. <laughs> And so oh. I grew up like very like, you know, or like my six, my best friend in sixth grade ended our friendship by going, I wish Hitler had killed your family. I just like wept, just started crying Jesus. in like, oh. in like homeroom or something. I can't, it was like towards the end of the day, you go back to homeroom. I remember <laughs> saying that. Gee. Oh, oh yeah, no, oh. cruelty was that flippant. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. like, yeah, yeah. It's a, Homophobia, I'm sure racism was that flippant. Oh, like, but yes. Crazy. So a Jew from Pennsylvania is a different, I, I realized this last night, like I present in New York or LA, I present as just a white man, mm-hmm. or as Naomi would say, sure. a white man. White. <laughs> white. And so it's a. I not. I'm not used to that. I'm not. U- I'm used to being like, oh, I'm the one everyone's going to. Right. Like when shit gets bad, right. I'm the one that's going to be shoved to a uh, a train car and taken off somewhere. God. Um. But. So I I don't know how to answer. But Henry Winkler. Like, yes. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Thank you. No. Yes. Get us <laughs> no, back to Winkler. Well, no. So like I, I get what you're saying. I get. No. I completely well, understand. Well, right. What that you're discussion saying. of like who's white, who's Jewish, who's whatever. Yeah. Whereas like it's because I, I feel like it was a conversation we had early on, Andy. Like because, you know, I grew up in New York. I went to private school in the Upper East Side, yeah, honey. Yeah. I was like, you're Jewish. Okay. You're thriving. <laughs> you know. I know. Ne- I didn't must know. Must be roses. <laughs> I didn't know. Obviously, you know, I knew the history, but what mm-hmm. it meant, you know, now or coming up or as a kid in the 90s yeah. going to school on Park Avenue. I didn't see it. Right, yeah, right, no. right. And then to, you know, I'm like, oh, right, right, right. If you're, you know, I think for most others, mm. you know, right. If you're away from a major city. Yeah. In Pennsylvania, we're just like we're we're at Zyklon A level <laughs> One we're one step away from Zyklon B right down there. <laughs> That's oh, what a time. Dark, yes. Yeah, Andy, dark. Maybe the Andy, darkest. Andy what, keeps it he... light, and that's, I but, think, what I love about him. Guys, yeah, we went yeah. from... The bits. We need the bits. <laughs> we need the bits. <laughs> we went from Flintstones to gas chambers. But he can juxtapose... That's a full spectrum. He can flip <laughs> He can flip between the two. Well, it keeps it's you so guessing. Amazing. Sometimes I said, honey, if you ever got Alzheimer's, I don't know if I'd know. <laughs> because <laughs> you be saying some stuff and juxtaposing, where I'm oh. like, are you here? Oh. <laughs> and I... <laughs> 
where they're already the dementia plaques are in the brain. No, don't say I'm that. Dying. That's my greatest fear. No, oh, no, 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 no. My I'm grandfather ha- had it. The worst thing you can do with someone who may be suffer may potentially have an Alzheimer's gene is, is to, to tell think them. about it. What do you mean? Oh, really? This is the fucking oh, it's paradox. To, it's, it's, to, it's, to, it's because if you n- think about having Alzheimer's. Are you talking about a panic attack? Someone, if you think about someone else having Alzheimer's, that means they will no, no, have no, no, it. No, 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 no. If you panic about having Alzheimer's that and means- you fixate on it, it, that, that's a bad thing to do. My mom's doing that. My mom's been doing that for the last 20 well, years. Well, she's got to stop. It sucks. This is why I'm not going to have sex with her. <laughs> <laughs> she's so insane. She's in- <laughs> if she wouldn't think about that, it'd be on. I'd put it down. Oh, my God. Oh, your sister Yang is listening to this. She's so furious. No, she loves that. She loves that. Um, she loves it. Sister Yang is in uh, is is a juice living in a white supremacy oh my we talked about this on the episode i said bone yang is the one that's closer to being the jew boo (laughs) well literally i wanted to be like i'm like she is an asian jew in the south yes (laughs) god bless i said girl you on the front lines (laughs) she's in atlanta she's doing great but she oh but they they did they did do a great atlanta joke on at the emmys last night which i loved what they do uh where there was like um I think it was Che made a joke. It was like, uh, and 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 there's this new show called 15 Miles Outside of Atlanta. That that's an, that's an all white cast or something. No, they're they're, they're doing an all right reboot of Atlanta called 15 Miles Outside. Of Atlanta. <laughs> that's I love that. Funny. Um, okay, I think it's time. It's time. For I don't think so, honey. <gasps> Ooh! Oh, Andy just. Oh my God. Tightened. <laughs> tightened up. Oh my God, he's opened a notebook. Oh, and he's got the. Oh, re- I love a prepared queen. Okay, and we just. <laughs> we stand a prepared queen. We stand a prepared queen. We just had Max Silvestri in who delivered a great one written out. And we, and this, this mm-hmm. is truly a sea change moment for us because we realize that we have to bring. It's got to, we got to be bringing our A game. We got to bring our A game Because you know what's crazy is like, everyone's like, oh, you guys, you guys like. Are the masters I don't think of the so, form. You're the master of the form. It's like, no. No. We, we're, out of the 300 people we've had do it, like I'm gonna like, rank us at like 168 and yeah. 169. I'm in, I'm in the third percentile. I'm uh, like, you yeah. know, uh, I'm, I'm like in the middle of the pack. Yes, but we've meanwhile, had some people full on slay it. We've got, we've got some titans here. So uh, here we go, Matt. You want to go first? No, you went first last time. I can go first. You want to go first? That's generous. Um, of you. Uh, is generous. You no. want me to go first? I can go first. I can go first. I'll go first. I'll uh, go first. Okay, this is Matt Rogers. <laughs> I know, that's what he so, wants. Honey. Take uh, in your face, my love. <laughs> um. Uh, this is Matt Rogers. I don't think so. Honey's time starts now. I don't think so, honey. That the Oscars are gonna be shorter, bitch. Oh. We like the long Oscars. Okay. We are gay. Yes. We want the long Oscars. Come we on. want every original song performed in full. Mm. If not, I don't think so, honey. Uh. I don't think so, honey. That we're not getting full <laughs> clips of all the nominated films with people coming out. And I don't think so, honey. That every performer's entrance is in a full minute long. I don't think so, honey. I want a yes. long Oscars. Mm. You're gonna condense the Oscars to two hours. Hours, bitch, I love staying up. It's an excuse. 30 seconds. It reminds me of when I was little and I have that decadent moment where I'd lay out all the snacks and I'd stay up until one in the morn yeah. <laughs> to see if Annette Benning was going to win for American Beauty. She did not. Oh. <laughs> that year it was Hillary Swank and Boys Don't Cry. Questionable. Oh, I don't think so, honey, seconds. that win. Or maybe either of her wins. Oh. I don't think so, honey, that Hillary Swank has two Oscar wins oh. and Annette Benning has zero. And why am I able to say I don't think so, honey, this? Because I have a long history of hours spent watching the Oscars. Let me watch a long Oscars as part of my gay culture. And that's one minute. Yes. They yes. said they were going to take... Yes. They, 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 they oh, made man. two changes to the Oscars. They were adding Best Popular Film, which has been rescinded, oh, yes. which I agree with. Yes. God. Thank God. And they were going to shorten the Oscars, and they are going to keep it short. Bitch, no, we like no, the long I Oscars. Want it long. I'm here for the full night, as you said, yes. especially yeah. like, you know, as a kid, too, like the Sunday night, and it was like stay up late on Sunday, which it, was always like a school night. It's an, an event. It's, it's an event. It's an event. You're here for the two hours. I mean, with all those commercials, it's not so bad. No, no. it's not. And it's such a, you know what I mean? Like a culture, like I want to see everything. You know, I sort of got, do you think they're going to cut the in memoriam? No, oh, they're not no, going to cut the in memoriam, but they're going to cut like a lot of categories. I mean, like, well, that's what I'm saying. They got to, I mean, I mean, you're not going to see like sound mixing, sound editing, cinematography. You're not going to see that shit. You're probably, honestly, you're probably going to see the big, the big ones. The so big ones. Acting, you'll see all those because, of course, right. you'll see Best Picture. You'll see <laughs> like whatever wins for song because there's going right. to be the performances. Mm. You're there for writing. They always give you original. They'll give you the adapted and original screenplay. Right. And honestly, Oh my god! What if they give you best none director? Of, what if they give you none of the like international animation? 
<laughs> See, they might but not that's... give you foreign film. Well, right, but that's even the, you know shorts and the and the features, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like that's you know that's a huge that's moment. Exposure. Yeah, it's, it's like give right. them their time yes. on stage. Yes. You're cutting on TV an hour out of it. That's like, crazy. And, and and I would imagine that they're not going to cut the song performances because right. not when you have Gaga up there potentially doing it, and also Troy Sivan is potentially <gasps> going to have. Oh, for Boy Erased. Ooh. For Boy Erased. Okay, oh is God. Boy Erased just a gritty love, Simon? <laughs> What's going on there? I, th- I think it, that is one way to market is it. it. Out yes. Yet? No. 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 Uh, I no. saw. It, I saw. It, I was just like. I was like. It planet Toronto. I think okay. Love Simon is dealing more with uh, I'm I'm gay and it's my problem, whereas like the conflict of boy or race is specifically the conversion. conversion okay. okay. Hold on okay, a second. Okay, okay. Was Love Gilda supposed to be a takeoff on Love Simon? <laughs> I don't think so. The bit. I don't think so, <laughs> honey. <laughs> I don't, think, I don't so. think so with that oversimplification. How dare you? you one it's one make, word. And if that was a bit, I don't approve. I don't approve. I did I did cry at the Love Gilda trailer. Oh my god, it was so we I, saw the, we saw the movie saw and it? I cried. Oh, yes, we saw it. It was oh, lovely. Was oh my god. And actually, I will say, you know, I didn't grow up uh, as a, yeah, Gilda. she was, you know, and I wasn't I, someone even though I do comedy, I wasn't necessarily like a comedy nerd and yeah, didn't ingest. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't start watching SNL till like the Oterry years. Right. You know? A ter- yeah, I think sure, I would yeah. say Oterry the years. same. So, like, I didn't, know, but, like, you know, so to see her story, I mean, when I knew her, you know, in my head, I knew her as being a comedian power couple with Gene Wilder. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I didn't know all yeah, the stuff yeah. before. And no, oh my yeah, God, it was crazy. so yeah. good. It's rich. So Man. good. You have to see it, everyone. Um, Bowen, your phone went to. Oh, okay. Here. Sorry, uh, this is just a behind the scenes moment. Just a phone moment. Phones they go to, you know. Here we go. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> okay, this is Bowen Yang's I Don't Think So Honey on this episode. And this time starts now. I don't think so, honey. These shits I've been taking the last couple of weeks. <laughs> I am dumping out beef stew into my bowl every morning. <laughs> and I can't do it anymore. I'm getting very concerned. And I'm on a thread with lovely people and a dress. And Nicole Silver, <laughs> Rachel Winitsky, Billy Domino. We call wow. it. We call it um, ploppers or something. We all text each other as soon as we take. He a knows shed. exactly what it's called, and it's definitely called. Ploppers. No, but no. The reason I don't know is because it changes every week. Okay. And so someone changes the type. To protect your anonymity. To protect your anonymity. I am. I don't like what's coming out of my <laughs> Jesus, he's for you. And no, and I really have been taking problematic shits for the last twelve months. Oh my god. And I. No doctor will give me a straight seconds. answer. They're saying, you know, just eat more fiber. I'm saying, no, I'm, I, if I ate a whole celery stalk <laughs> every second of the day, I w- this would not change anything. Five seconds. I think I need to do less fleet enemas. <laughs> That's one minute. That's one no, minute. say no more. <laughs> He's been too busy trying to get ready for the anal. No, I don't do it. I don't have anal. Anal's over. Anal is Especially over. Especially rule of culture number 11. 11. Anal's, Anal's over. 2019, it's all about fraudage. 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 Got a frot. Got a frot. Let's say frottage. 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 I've had some of the best sexual experiences of my life performing frottage. <laughs> There is like this weird like subculture subreddit of of Sub gay of gay men who are just like yeah no no anal just we're we let's just, just rub dicks let's on rub our, our body dicks. until we and do you know celebrate? what it's pretty solid yeah, so to speak of course it is. okay we get off well now it's but time. also Bowen it's been like this for a long time about a year the, ago the I was having an interesting time with my poops as well yeah and then <laughs> I I got out of it I've seen the other side I'm so what, devastated well, to know, hear that you're not Bo you're not alone. Okay. Okay, I'm here with you, and Thank you know you. what? I'm gonna get an oscopy. <gasps> honey, I'm getting in there. Get it. Do you have get coverage? Get a camera. I Hon- have coverage. Honey, if you got coverage, get it covered. <laughs> That's what I say. I'm getting in there, and I'm getting answers. You want a camera up there? I'm getting it. I don't want it, <laughs> but I'll do what needs to be done. There's nothing more humiliating than going for a butthole problem to the doctor. <laughs> but you gotta put that on. You gotta gram that. Grandma, oh yeah! Grandma, I mean, only if it's a nice-looking picture. Go live, baby! <laughs> Boomerang. Okay, I think. Fantastic. I think it's time for Naomi to go because uh, Naomi, I, don't, I go. really don't think. I don't really don't think. <laughs> Stop I with can, this! No, Andy, you got it. You've got written so, honey, out this garbage. You got written out. Matt and I just had to pull that out of our asses, so I to mean, speak. One of us, literally. Literally. Honey. And okay, Andy, as a first timer, we're we're gonna save you for last. I think. And it's, it's Na- Naomi time. Na- Naomi's going to I'm going to Don't, gonna don't, plots. don't. This is going to go so well. This is Naomi at Paragons. I don't think so, honey. Her time starts now. I don't think so, honey. These dangerous white men <laughs> who say, I've learned to forgive myself. Ah! Okay, oh. honey, I don't think 
think it's about what you think about yourself. No. no. Because if we could have trust your judgment, we wouldn't have been in this situation to begin no, with, honey. Right I don't. I don't need to name a name here, honey, because right. the list is too long, the list. honey. <laughs> It's not about specifics. It's about the general deciding when you yes. are done. Right. The populace. I, 30 seconds. You don't get to make the decisions anymore, honey. Mm. Nope. I don't think so, honey. Coming at us when you feel right. Yeah. Uh, I think your preoccupation with, with what makes you feel good is the problem, honey. Don't, I don't want to know what you feel about you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I feel about you. Yes. And listen. We are going to take a collective, we're going to have a collective text message chat, honey. <laughs> Five seconds. And we're going to tell you when we're ready for you to be forgiven. And that's one minute. Yeah, this thing of I feel it's time, I feel I'm ready to be forgiven. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Not you up to Syntactically, you. it's a no. <laughs> it's a no. Have you ever said that in a relationship? <laughs> What? yells at me when I, I didn't wrong. yell at no. you. I know I. <laughs> he didn't like the way I. I know I screamed at your mom. I'm ready to be forgiven. <laughs> Who is that? Yeah, Andy? but that is a very dad thing to say. That though. is such yeah, a dad man. thing. This is my new character. I'm Joanne. deciding the conflict is over. Yeah, my, right. I decide when we are done here. Yeah. Oh, my dad would pull that shit all the time, and I, even as a seven year old, I'd be like, no. Yeah. <laughs> the, my sense of judgment was so thrown. Oh, what do you mean back then? Like, just because there is this right. thing of like, I know everything, period. You know what I mean? Oh, like, it's sure. just a, patri it's a patriarchal thing that, you know, totally. yeah. it's, you it's, know it's, it's all... wrong as a human walking the earth, but you have to put up with. Yeah. And then, yeah, but then like once, because. once you develop that vocabulary, like now, like I've called my dad out like retroactively and been like, oh yeah, all those fights we had as kids <laughs> yeah. when we were kids, like that was, you know, that was bullshit, right? He was like, yeah, I know. How do you say <laughs> bye bitch in Mandarin? <laughs> it's it's longer than bye bitch. It's more syllables well, than Well, go bitch. ahead. Uh, 再见婊子. Ooh, I love oh, that. Oh, that's my God. Yeah. That's some good. That was magical. Oh, there you go. Am I saying it? 再见婊子. Close enough. It's good. good. I'm into it. it. But it's not, it doesn't have that same punch and punch. 再见婊子. I felt, I felt the punch. <laughs> yeah. You felt it? I did. Yeah. That's I what I gotta say, oh. my skin got excited. Ooh. Hey, Bielta. Andy's skin got excited. 再见. Okay. I felt it. I felt a tingle everywhere. <laughs> and we're gonna feel a tingle now with Andy Beckerman's I don't think so, honey. Ooh, good glory. I Honey, honey, I love this group. Come on, come on. Wait, wait, are we getting a pep talk? Honestly, honey, feeling feeling sick to my stomach. Don't. Honey, honey, you can do this. Yes, you have prepared this. Okay, your crown has been bought and paid for. Uh, Wear Claire it, Foy, bitch. Wear it, <laughs> Miss Foy. Oh my God, I love it. Okay, this is Andy Beckman's. I don't think so, honey. His time starts now. I don't think so, honey. Journalists who put the word comedian in their Twitter bio. Oh, oh no. I spent bingo. thousands of dollars of my own money at UCB and earned the frigid disapproval of my waspy Jewish parents in order to call myself a comedian. Oh, wow. You bingo. spent tens of thousands of your dollars of your parents' money to go to Columbia J School and hobnob oh. with the strange fail sons of Maggie Haberman and David oh, Remnick. Oh, my God. And just because you wrote some slightly sarcastic as weak as a Norm MacDonald apology, quote, unquote, seconds. joke about Trump being a fucking dipshit or something as similarly obvious that Twitter filleted you for mostly because your uh. BuzzFeed byline, you think you can call yourself a comedian? Oh. I don't think so, honey. Yes. 15 I, seconds. I once saw Ben Gibber do a solo performance uh. and every comment he made between songs that even approached the event oh, horizon God. of amusing elicited roars of laughter from the very willing audience. Five Yet seconds. I don't see a 10 minute chunk on how to divorce a quirky girl on the new Death Cab album because oh. he knows how to stay in his lane. And that's one wow. minute. <laughs> that's very true. I am spent. That's a, that was very good. Congratulations. Congratulations. Baby. You stared at the dragon in its face and slit its goddamn and throat. you made an... This is the best kind. The, the observational ones. Absolutely, both bitch. The, both observations. We. I talked about my fucking poop. <laughs> and you talked about... Don't qualify mine. Mine was good. Stop. Okay. But, then, but Naomi and Andy... I can't win in this town. Incisive cultural commentary. Oh, what is wrong with these people? Truly, I mean... The dilettantes. The I, dilettantes. I feel you have to be... You have to perform to be a comedian. Sorry. I'm with you. I, I, sort of. I, or, not anymore. Just put it in your Twitter bio well, and you're yeah. new, now a comedian. Listen, I, and I, I also don't like to be superior about anything. I mean, I think tweets can be funny. I just, and I think you can be very good at writing them. It's yes. just that you know. Also, there's nothing wrong like you're comedian. with right. not using, instead of using the word comedian, you say humorist or raconteur, raconteuse, <laughs> whatever, Ooh, you, whatever yes. you please. But comedian, there is some sort of implicit meaning in you performing on a stage in front of strangers. I also think good luck calling yourself a comedian 
and then getting in a room with people who actually are when you've sit, called yourself a comedian in all these years and then people find out that you don't haven't performed. Whatever. I, I mean, also really don't like to be superior about it, but it is no, a thing. It's a thing. And it's we're, a thing. Look, we're not, and it's claiming something you haven't earned. Sure. and But it's not superiority. It's, it's just about like, just it's fine. Like stay in your as Andy Beckerman once said, stay in your own lane. Or you know what? Go out there and do mics. Yeah. Go out there and put put a show up. Yeah, there's not, just start whenever. It's, just, it's never too late to start. Never, never, never too late. And they look, just want the cultural cachet of comedy's in now, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, want yeah. that, even though really they're just writing. You know what <laughs> listicles sure. and things like that. I can't believe you. You, you threw in a Maggie Haberman, <laughs> David Remnick. <laughs> Name little 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 Barb. There. <laughs> Love that Barbalicious. Barbalicious. Barbarella. That's gonna <laughs> Sorry, be Jane that's Fonda. gonna be your name Thanks. for me now, Barbarella. Thanks. I do Barbarella. identify with with Jane Fonda. Yes, <laughs> same. Uh, wow, this is truly a special episode. Phenomenal. Episode. This was a phenomenous phenomenous episode, and I would say that it felt like therapy. It truly did. I'm not even saying this in any sort of facetious way. Thank you for the asking those questions, Andy. Yeah, that was really good. And thank you for facilitating all. I mean, it, it, this only happens because, and this is what I said on the top of the show, Andy and Naomi just set the tone right. They come in correct. Come correct. Say come something correct. beautiful and poignant. That will be the last thing no. our <laughs> listeners hear. So much pressure. Go. Um, I my I'm feeling very vulny right now. Vulny. My oh, heart is is very open, and I'm glad. That you three could come in and build a fire and cook a stew mm. that we could all enjoy. Don't how <laughs> dare you mention stews after I just <laughs> compared my fecal matter <laughs> to beef stews. This is pre chew stew. Pre chew, pre chew. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I'll just keep it simple. You know, something from one of our favorite movies. If you wanna be somebody, <gasps> if you wanna go somewhere. Oh. Oh. You better wake up and pay attention. Wow. Naomi. Oh, Kalista. Oh, Kalista. I'm telling you, Lady Day. Lady Day. We can't. You know what? We end the, we, you, you and I end the show, the episode with a song each time. But that, no, no, we're not going to beat that. Uh, check out Couples Therapy, October or 6th. Or are we? Oh! <laughs> check out Couples Therapy, October oh! 6th at the Virgil in LA. Listen to the podcast. It's fantastic. I'm deep end. Watch as I dive in. I never meet the ground. We're far from the shallow now. Did that kind of work? Yeah, it did. Okay. It's good. Always. Forever. Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram.